This is Mike Loveday with studentsportslacrosse.com, and I'm here with a uh, select group of coaches to discuss the role of uh, club lacrosse in today's recruiting world. Um, first, we're going to start. Um, we got uh, Coach Casey O'Neill. He's the head coach at Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C. Um, we got uh, Jonathan Zisi. He's the head coach at Torrey Pines High School in California, and also the the director of recruiting for Adrenaline Lacrosse, also out in uh, the West Coast. We got Tom Peace, who is the recruiting coordinator for uh, CCBC Essex, and he's also the uh, assistant on the offense. Um, and we also got Lee Southern, who's the founder and director of uh, NJ Riot, New Jersey Riot, um, obviously in New Jersey. Um, so, guys, welcome um, to the the Google Hangout today. And to get everything kind of started off, you know, we're going to discuss a lot of things, and I'm going to do my best to moderate and let you guys have at it. Um, but you know. To start off, what do you guys see, and we'll start with you, Coach O'Neill. Um, what do you guys kind of see as the, the role of club lacrosse in the world of today's recruiting? I think it plays a, it plays a big role, especially for us, because we have, uh, you know, we have a lot of kids, three teams, you know, freshmen, JB, varsity, and so that's a lot for me to handle as a, as a, as a head coach and, and somebody who works at a high school full-time, and so relying on club coaches and club teams to help my kids get um, more exposure, more than they get, with just us going to a select group of tournaments in the summer, in the winter, uh, and in the off season for, for guys that are playing other sports, I rely on the club coaches in this area heavily. Um, it, it's important to me to have those relationships uh, so that I know, hey, we do two weeks in a summer tournament that our kids are busy and with the right club teams. We always stress that. If, if you're comfortable with the coaches, you're getting good exposure with them, uh, you're getting good coaching, uh, they are going to get that. So it's, it's an extremely important role for us here at school. Okay, um, Co Coach Southern. Uh, I know you've uh, we're, you're dropping in and out of the call, but you know I asked the question: What, what is the role of uh, club lacrosse in today's recruiting world? So, oh well, we lost him again. So, Coach Cece, we'll, we'll go with you. Um, you know, you have a unique perspective. You're a head coach, but you also you know work heavily with the with the club team. What do you see as the role? Uh, for us out here in the West Coast. It's a little bit more challenging. Obviously, no one is going to come out and watch any of the time during the regular season. Uh, so we got to get them back east once, twice, maybe three times a year. And it's important that we're going to the right event. We're only going back east so infrequently that it's important that we have the right kids at the right events. And so we've done a good job of finding events that have worked for us. Uh, and we do go back east. Our, our West Coast Stars Club team is pulling kids from nine different states. So it's, it's unique because we don't have the practice aspect of it. The kids kind of show up. We have a day to walk through and the kids are just playing. A lot of them barely know each other and while they're very talented, the cohesion part is always the biggest challenge as well as the travel. Especially in the fall winter, you've got guys taking red eyes on Friday night to play in a Saturday-Sunday deal. So there's different obstacles and challenges for the West Coast kid um, for sure. Okay. Um, Co Coach Southern, we'll try to get you. What do you see as the, the role of club lacrosse in today's recruiting role? Hmm. Looks like he froze again. Yeah, it looks like I might froze. All right, Tom, <laughs> it's, it's your, your go. You have a unique perspective because you've been, you know, you're, you're a coach who does recruiting. So, you know, what do you kind of see as a role? I think, I mean, lacrosse is still a state where it's a, it's a small world. It's, it's a small, um, uh, you don't want to burn any bridges in this game. And you want to make sure you reach out to all the uh, parties available either uh, club coaches are high school coaches, and some high school coaches are club coaches. So you want to keep those relationships open and try to uh, build those relationships as a coach in college and try to make sure that you reach out to those guys and see who's coming up through their, their club programs and uh, also reach out to the high school coaches. They're very important as well. Um, so I think the club thing is great for some aspects of trying to get out and seeing some kids play that you don't normally see in some areas like out, in, out on the west coast like coach uh, CC was saying and it's good to see them come over here to see them play because we don't get out to the west coast as much so I think as uh, the club scene keeps growing and people uh, keep playing the game all over the country it's, it helps programs like ours and um, I think it's a, it's good for the game. 
Okay. Um, and you know we're not ignoring Coach Southern. He's keep, he's like we got we got a bad signal, so he keeps dropping in and out. Um, so we'll circle back with him when we can. But um, you know you bring up kind of a, uh, an interesting point. You know the the dy- dynamic between the high school and, and the club. Um, you know we got a couple guys here that you know Coach Anu, your high school coach, Coach Cece, you you do both. How do you guys kind of see that dynamic? Because I know I'm sure you know. When I was talking to Coach Anu yesterday, you guys had a sophomore commit, so and he was on a guy who was on your guys' freshman team. So you probably haven't seen two, you know, you haven't really coached him that much, um, but yet here he is. He's going to go to a school like High Point. So you know, when you got guys like that, like from the college perspective, like how do you kind of balance that end? And whoever wants to kind of field that question, like you know, where where does that kind of play? Like how much do you want to know about what's going on with kids that are eventually going to be in your program? Um, and at what point do you want to know it? I mean, for me, you know, I obviously any kid that's that's here at the school, you know, I want to know who they're talking to and and what's going on, and develop relationships with with those coaches, the club coaches. You know, it doesn't always happen because there's so many in this area here in the district, in the in the Mid Atlantic, from Baltimore to Virginia to D.C. But for a kid that's going through the process of of, of being recruited at a young age, you know, I want to know exactly what's going on, whether he's made the varsity or not, because he's still part of our, you know, quote unquote. The program, you know, freshman or JV, and so it, it again, it's really important to have those relationships. I don't think lacrosse has gotten anywhere near what it's like in hockey or soccer, and, and you hear about those stories of kids that can't play for their high school teams. I think lacrosse has really done a, a great job in terms of the club coaches getting along with the high school coaches. A lot of those guys, it's a small community, you know, we all got to get along and, and do what's best for our kids. Yeah. Coach CC, do you have a, a, a thought on that at all? I think for us out here, it's important because there's it's kind of the wild, wild west still, and there are a lot of guys out here that are running clubs that don't really know what they're doing. Um, so if we can act, you know, having a hand in both, it's important for me to get my kids playing with club guys that know what they're doing and are actually going to get them in front of coaches and get them recruited. And uh, at this point, the West Coast Stars name has done a good enough job of being a reliable and trustworthy source and building relationships with college coaches that feel pretty strongly about our kids going on that plan, which is, there's a lot of clubs out here, but for us right now, that's that's been the best bet for our kids. Okay. Um, Coach Southern, it seems like we might have you. Um, yeah. at, at what point, so you obviously, you you founded the New Jersey Riot, and I'm sure you had, um, you know, there's obviously New Jersey is one of the, considered one of the hotbeds for lacrosse. You know, at, at what point did you notice that there was maybe um, an increased role for club lacrosse in, in today's recruiting world? Or was there a point? Well, I think I- well, I, I've been trying to find my way as a parent of a 2014-2016 and, you know, going through the process. I've been a parent in five or six different clubs um, in this area, um, and we are in a hotbed of, of lacrosse. And, you know, we started our own uh, organization, you know, with a, with a good core group of people. And, you know, as you start to get into this process, you start to realize that a lot of the college coaches and a lot of the recruiting events – uh, you know, it, it, it's all it, all the recruiting dates that are available have multiple, multiple events to choose from. And what ends up happening is is that you're trying to serve your membership. And one of the other gentlemen, uh, I must have blipped out right after he was, he was speaking, you know, there are a lot of clubs who don't really know what they're doing and they're not organized. And, you know, trying to find the information out about what coaches want, what the ability it is for us to provide, you know, Know, the, the, our parents' membership and the kids and, and the coaches, in, in all fairness, with a good opportunity, I think has been very, very important. And, you know, that's, that's what we've been trying to do. We're really only about a year old. You know, we have now uh, fifth through eighth grade and then this 2017-2016 elite program. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, the West Coast Stars, I know them very well. I know the Ritz brothers personally very well for a long time. And they're as good as they get. And they do an unbelievable job, you know, uh, as one of the – He was touching on some some good points there, you know, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So was there a certain point, like, you know, maybe Coach Anu, maybe I know you've been at Gonzaga for a few years now, and you know, obviously all you guys have different perspectives on it, but you know, did you see a point in which the, the club scene kind of started to take an increased um, role in all the recruiting? I, you know, it, 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 I can't give an exact date, but I, I feel like in the last, you know, in the last decade or so it has grown. I mean, it, it, at least here again as – you know, on the West Coast, it's different here. I mean, there's just so many teams in the in the Mid Atlantic for for clubs that it really has taken a role. I mean, for here in Washington, you know, um, you know, Georgia, you think of Georgetown Prep and you think of Landon, and now we've just with this club scene and, and creating at such a youth age now, it's grown so many programs like ours, like St. Stephen, St. Agnes, and the Bullises in these places. And then, you know, we got to compete with the guys just a little north of us in Philly and Baltimore. So, 
I can't give you an exact date, but it has it, it has grown a lot. How about you, Coach Zisi? Because I'm sure, I, as you mentioned, the West Coast, you guys have a different different perspective on it. Because you said, you know, there's not as many you know, college coaches are not as you know what Denver's the furthest West Coast D1 program. So you guys have almost sometimes have to come east. So you know, w- did it happen earlier for for the West Coast than you think maybe did for other parts of the country? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the kids are forced to kind of <clears throat> move back east, and I think there's been a few recruiting events that have now come west. I think Adrenaline and 3D have started bringing coaches west, which has been helpful. Um, but I think it was the, the most glaring example was this summer at the Under Armour Games. I happened to coach the west team, and uh, you know, going 3-1 and one in that just really shows that the level of play is, is getting there uh, slowly but surely with the rest of the world. I mean, the depth isn't there on the west coast but the best players are as good as the best players on the East. And that's been a testament to the year-round play and the growth of certain clubs, I think, uh, in the West. I can attest to that. I mean, well, I was there at the Under Armour Games, and those guys were fantastic. They guys had a great team. And you got programs like yours and and St. Ignatius up north. Uh, I mean, it's just the athletes are just as good, and if not better. And now they're getting the coaches on the West Coast and in the Southwest and in, you know, the Midwest. And it's going to explode for sure. Yeah. Okay, um, you know, and Tom, I'm gonna to start this one off with you since you're you're a college uh, college coach and you do the recruiting recruiting in. Um, you know, for for club, you know, now that we're seeing kids commit earlier and earlier, um, how much of a role, you know, does does the club scene almost not really supersede some of the high school activities? But you know, how important is club to kind of get some of those kids noticed earlier on? So by the time they actually play the varsity team, you know, maybe it's not quite as important. I think it's it's a it's a it's an important thing for the younger guys to keep playing the game after high school a little bit and into the summer and also here in the winter to get on the lacrosse field and play some lacrosse and get noticed and get some looks from from some colleges. Um, I know in the like the younger classes, it's it's important to get them some uh, some playing time to get out there and get looks from co- coaches and. I, just, I, I my whole thing is just to I think the commitments are a little too early in the process. I think the freshman and sophomore commitments are a little too early right now in the process. I, I think once they hit the junior senior range, uh, the, the 2015s to 2014s right now, I think is the prime time to commit because I think lower than that they don't have much. Um, uh, I guess say as an as as an adult to make that decision to go to college and make that commitment, but I, that's a, that's their decision. I think that is important, but I don't. I just think right now at at their stage at at that level, at the freshman sophomore level, I think it's tougher to make that decision to go to like a Johns Hopkins and make right. that decision and commit to that. So that's my only thing. Yeah, we'll make a. We'll definitely. I'm going to circle back to that here, but I want to make sure I get everybody uh, to kind of weigh in on this. Uh, Lee, we'll go. We'll go to you. Um, you know, uh, does especially running a club program. You know, how do you kind of see the role of, of that club? Does does you? I know you guys had the 16, and now you guys have a 17 team. So, you know, how important is is the club versus you know that kid's high school career? Well, I, I think it depends in, in around here of what high school you go to, to be honest with you. I mean, my kids go to Randolph High School, and, you know, I've said this numerous times that if, um, you know, I relied on what my town and my high school program was offering to my sons, they wouldn't be going anywhere or pursuing anything. I've been criticized in my own town over all the years of looking after my kids and a couple other ones trying to get them their looks and opportunities And like, you know, Mike, we've discussed before, my 2014s committed to go play at Stevens Tech, which is an unbelievable education and and school for him. And it's been a a great opportunity for him to, he's a senior in high school now to kind of, to dig in there. And, you know, without looking after him myself, you know, uh, he wouldn't basically be going anywhere. You know, that being said, around here, if, if your kid goes to Ridgewood High School, if he goes to Mountain Lakes, if he goes to Summit, if he goes to Chatham, you know, maybe Ridge High School won the TOC. You know what? Those high school coaches have an influence. Oh. Well, while we lost him, Coach Cece, uh, let's get your perspective on that. You know, the the club, you know, how important – how is has club become more important, especially with the way recruiting has kind of taken off? Because I know we've already had a few 17s commit at this point, you know, who haven't played a varsity game. Yeah, I think out here, I mean, being a high school coach certainly gives you a level of credibility and sort of a – objective bias with with certain college coaches, but club is the only modality for kids out here to really get recruited. 
I think if you play it to a your St. Ignatius, you have that as sort of a, a resume builder. But at the end of the day, it's just club. It's the only way for a Western kid to really get seen uh, or showcased. So that's so even if uh, a kid, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of the, the, I think it was Emery who was St. Ignatius. You know, is was he primarily a club kid? You know, even if because obviously he's extremely talented. So you're thinking yeah. if he if he had just not done the club thing and just relied on a high school, um, you, you, do you think he would have been as highly recruited? Uh, not as highly. I mean, kids at Torrey Pines and Kent Denver and Cherry Creek and like the 10 or 12 name programs can can maybe do that. Um, Emery obviously had his older brother, which is a different story, but yeah. on the whole, a lot of our best kids at the West Coast Stars level come from these no-name high schools, kind of like Lee was just saying, and it's club is their only avenue. It's the only vehicle that has worked. So for the Western and non-traditional kids, it's much more important, I think, on the East Coast. I mean, I grew up in New England, like, playing in the Founders League or playing in, in these stronger programs in the spring in New Jersey and Baltimore, your high school coach can take care of you. He's got the connections. He's been there for years. He's a trusted source. We don't have that out west right now. Yeah. So club is it. Okay. How about you, Coach Neil? I know you got a perspective because we've, we've touched on a little bit. We know, um, have you have any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been lucky here in the last, you know, five years to, to have some success, and, and we certainly have had a great um, – you know, great opportunity to develop these relationships with with co college coaches. So we we've been lucky in that sense. However, there's there's a lot of kids here, and a lot of kids that play lacrosse, and so therefore I rely on some of those club teams and, and those kids getting exposure. The 25 that won't go with us to the Under Armour shootout or to the uh, you know the National High School Showcase that we go to, which is all high school teams. You know, it's important that they they, they latch on with some some of those club teams and get that exposure and hopefully use our high school name and that club team name with, with the right coaches to, to help their recruiting. Um, but it's, you know, it, it's a totally different beast than it is out west and for us, you know, because we've, you know, we compete with some, with, with some teams that are in the MIAA and, and, and the teams in this area. So um, it's kind of the best of both worlds for us. Yeah, okay. But absolutely um, important. Yeah. Um, Tom, you, you kind of touched on it earlier, and it kind of goes in with my, the last question that I, that I had. It's a little bit of a chicken or the egg question. Um, and whoever wants to field this first, be, be welcome to jump in. Um, now, did did club lacrosse help speed up the recruiting process for the younger guys, or did club lacrosse fill that hole for those guys? If I could jump in for a second, by the way, sorry, I keep flipping it out. You know, I'll tell you what. All I keep hearing is, is that the parents are pushing it. Then I keep hearing that the colleges are pushing it. Everybody's blaming everybody else, but at the end of the day, this is where we're at in a lacrosse society, yeah. and there's no answer to it, nor is anybody accepting responsibility for why it's jumped up any quicker. Right. And, I, you know, you know, I, people have asked me my opinion for whatever that's worth, and I've always said, you know what, we'll know within the next four to five years of all these last two years of early commits and then the next year of early commits, seeing how much they pan out. You know, one of our 2016 kids just committed to Cornell just recently, uh, a couple months ago from Ridgewood High School, Cooper Teletsko. And you know what? He's The kid is a, is a, an unbelievable athlete and player, and I'm very curious to see how, how it works out for him where he's going to be playing this spring, his sophomore year of high school. You know, we have three or four other kids that, you know, by the end of November could end up receiving offers to, to go and play. I speak to their parents, they ask me my opinion, and I'm like, look, you know, it comes down to, is that the university for your kid? Is that something they want to study there? You know, you, 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 the, I've been beating the drum on professional lacrosse and MLL lacrosse for years, and, you know, I, there is no tangible way to earn a very, very significant, consistent living in lacrosse, you know, uh, after, after college. You're going to college and maybe using lacrosse to trade up a little bit of a better education, and be have you know be part of a fraternity, be part of alumni, have lacrosse. It's part of your soul. Continue it and and use that to earn a great education, to go get a real good job, to not move back into your parents' basement, you know, and and you know uh, make money in a great career and have something of significance. But you know the the, the MLL and the, the, the professional lacrosse, they're, they're, that's never going to pay pay out anywhere near what any other professional league uh, is paying. Nor is that going to be a uh, something that a kid's going to go to college for, you know, you yeah. have to go to college for the for, for the college, you know, and and have that all as part of the experience. But it, no, it, and I'd love to hear your other guy's opinion because I tell you what, it's around here, it's become a very very hot topic. Okay, I agree. I mean, I, I agree one hundred percent. You know, it's it's. At the same time, Coach is, is so right. I mean, it, nobody's taking responsibility for the early recruiting, but at the same time, you know, can you blame a, a young family that opportunity to make a verbal commitment? John Tillman spoke at our school the other day and said, you know, the verbal commitment is what it is. It is what it sounds like. I mean, a lot can happen in between, uh, you know, now as a kid, as a 2016 and in three years. 
Um, but can you blame somebody that makes that commitment to the University of Virginia and it's that comfort level, you know, because if that's what they're doing, then why can't we do it? Um, I'll say this, though. I mean, you know, Mike, you came down and interviewed some of our guys and that, that had made commitments to Cornell and to Michigan and, and some places, and, and, and they all said, take your time, and, you know, because – and they made the comment, like, these kids – don't even know what they want for dinner. You know, how do they know what they want for college, and how do they know what they want to study? Exactly. But coach is right. I mean, you you got to pick the right thing. Uh, you know, any kid that wants to go to an Ivy or a NESCAC school, I think it's fantastic because you're almost guaranteed. You know, that diploma is going to guarantee a great opportunity for a job after school. And heck, I mean, the Naval Academies or any any several service academies, I mean, it's the right price, and it's that's a guaranteed job. So. It's it's crazy, but we've all got to kind of look out for our kids and and do what what's best for them. Yeah. I, I, I'll quick. say this real quick, but when I see on our level as a college coach, you're seeing a lot more kids transferring from school to school. And is that because they commit too early, or is that right. because they can't afford it when they get to that point when they're about to go to college? Um, it's it's a lot of questions that that, that can be answered so, several different ways, but I think a lot of the kids that we hear from that are transferring back to Baltimore from schools out, out of town, or it's because they're, they didn't pick the school that they were hoping they were going to. So I think it's it can go both ways. You can commit and make that decision and feel good about it, and you can go to that school and succeed, but some kids go make that decision too soon, and they uh, flame out, and they'll, they'll transfer and come to a different school. I mean, which is not a bad thing. I just think it just uh, is not it's um, not good. I don't think. So. Okay. How about you, Coach CC? How do you? How do you guys? Well, I'll tell you what. You know, also. Be oh. So let, let me get Coach CC to jump in real quick on that, and we'll come back to you, Lee. Uh, my feelings on that are, are kind of indifferent. As long as the boys and their families have done the due diligence and visited the schools and met with the coaches, and you know, actually, there's kids committing that haven't even seen school campuses, so. <laughs> As long as they're making their visits, meeting coaches, you don't know any, any more as an 18-year-old than you as a 16-year-old of where you want to go. And the, the luxury of lacrosse is that the amount of schools that offer lacrosse, 95% of them are good academic schools. So mm -hmm. it's hard to make a, a bad decision. Uh, and as long as we're involved in the process and the parents are doing, you know, asking all the right questions, it doesn't matter to me. We've got, I've got two freshmen that committed. We have, you know, and they're going to the Ivy League, so it's like how can you fault them? Um, right. you know, it's a tough say, but... At 18 or 16, it's really no different. Okay. Um, Lee, you, were, you said something? Oh, I was just saying, you know, you, you talk about the academics and the, fi the finances of going to a particular school. You know, you hear some mother on the sidelines saying, oh, my son got a full ride to go somewhere to play lacrosse. We all know that there's no such thing unless you're destitute or have literally minimal amount of money or income. You know, the, even the Division One scholarships, unless you are a, a, a ridiculous super top level uh, player, the Zach Greers of the world, or some high-level high person like that, you know, you're maybe going to get a piece of one scholarship. You know, maybe thousand dollars. Then it's going to come into where are your grades for merit based. Then it's going to come into what you know, what, what are your parents' incomes? You know, at the end of the day, you know, you could go and make a sixty thousand dollar education, forty thousand or thirty five thousand. Does that mean that you got a scholarship? You know, or does it mean that you know you got a partial scholarship? I mean. That's the whole thing. You still have to be able to pay thirty-five or forty thousand dollars as a parent in order to send your your kid to this school in order to play lacrosse to do all this stuff. You know. So that being said, the money isn't really available the way it is in other sports as well. So look at what everybody's chasing. And not saying it's a bad thing. I I'm helping my group of kids chase as well. Yeah, it, uh, Lee, I guess he froze on us again, but he brings up a good point. I was actually going to finish on this, and I know Tom probably has a perspective. Does the, the sped up recruiting, because obviously, you know, the 2014 classes for a lot of these schools are probably done. They're, you know, yeah. with the exception of maybe a few a few spots, but, um, you know, in most of the other sports, you know, football and basketball come to mind, like signing day is not until February, so those kids won't make that decision until then. Does, you know, for a guy like you, Tom, or you know the D three coaches Lee you said you got a guy going to the a kid going to Stevens Tech. Um, does the sped up recruiting process does it help or hurt the late bloomer? Because you know the late bloomer probably go to a D three school, but a lot of those D three schools can you know at least a few of those top D three schools could probably beat some of the lower end you know middle tier D one schools. So how do you guys kind of feel that this sped up process is kind of you know does it help? Does it hurt? Or does that fall? 
Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Look, I'm the father of a late bloomer. So my 2014 today is, you know, 6'4", 175 pounds, natural lefty attackman. And he's come into his own within the last 12 to 14 months. This past summer, he had three or four Division One schools, you know, reach out to him and want to talk to him about going. But he had his heart set on, you know, Stevens Tech. Tom, I'll let you jump in since you you, you know you, you work at a, as a recruiting coordinator at one of the, the community colleges here in Baltimore. Like, how do, how do you kind of see it? Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of late bloomers out there that are making uh, the rules come in the areas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I, so I was just I don't know why this keeps happening. You know, he he had his heart set on this school, and he's the happiest kid in the world academically. You know, for his life, location, everything to to go to school there. He was a late bloomer, and and this worked out for him. But, you know, there's a lot of other kids that, you know, I think a lot of those Division three schools in some ways may even offer a better overall lacrosse education and life for a lot of these kids uh, than a Division one school might. It all depends on the kid. It all depends on the family. You know, it, there's so many opportunities. I think one of you gentlemen said before, you know, the kids at 15, 16, what do they really know about what they want to be when they grow up or what they want to get out of life? Mm -hmm. By the time they're a junior or a senior, which is when the Division three schools are really in play here, they have a much better idea of, of what they want to study and what kind of life they want to live. And I'll tell you what, I take a Middlebury Tufts education any day of the week. You know, you're, you know, hell of a spot. I think, but, I think, I think the number one thing to, to pass to the kids and, and speaking on those late bloomers is I, what way we deal with it is no kid. I, I can't tell you in, in the seven years I've been a head coach and, and all the years as assistant and the kids we, we put out to college D1, D2, D3 or club, Nobody's process is the same, okay? So you can't go into this thing thinking exactly, all right, this is the recruiting tournament I'm going to go to, and I'm going to make varsity as a freshman, and boom, I'm going to commit to Johns Hopkins. It's not going to happen that way. It's all, it's like all different shapes and sizes and heartbeats and pulses. Some kids, it's just going to be that way. We have the late bloomers, like coach, like your son, and it all kind of, it plays itself out if the kids want it, if the kids are determined to do it, um, and if they have that kind of drive and passion and push themselves and have the right setting. So, there really is no no fine answer to that, but I do see the late bloomers. I mean, we just had two guys commit to Providence under Coach Gabrielli last year that were, you know, one's an All-American, and they're going there to get good money, and they're going to a good program from a guy that won a national championship as an assistant at Duke. And so the experiences are different, but not one person has the same exact um, sort of a path that they follow like the next guy. Nothing's the same. Yeah. Co Coach ZC, you want to jump in here, and then we'll head back to you, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I played at Tufts and I coached at Tufts, and so I always love to push the Division Three. But you know, out here in the West, there's become an obsession with I only want to go D1. And I don't even know what it means, but we're in that kind of phase where kids would rather go to, you name it, startup D1 program than ever even consider playing at Middlebury. And and honestly, out here, half the kids haven't even heard of of an SCAC school or, you know. So it's again, we're a little bit behind the curve with just people that are aren't as informed as they could be. Uh, and so the D3 thing is, it's almost like you haven't, you know, succeeded if you go D3 and D2 out here. And it's unfortunate because the people just don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think, you know, it might be prevalent out there, but I've covered high school sports often enough. It's it's everywhere. Like the okay. D1 yeah. is the, the holy grail of of sports and especially in, in a sport like lacrosse, which Lee mentioned earlier that, you know, you don't necessarily get a, you, you very rarely hear full rides that, you know, the you might be better off. You might get a better academic scholarship or, you know, better academically to go to a D3 or a D2 school from that perspective. Sure. Um, but, but Tom, back back to you because you had started a little bit earlier as far as, you know, you know, because you get a unique perspective. Um, you know, how do you kind of see the, the late bloomers? Does it help or hurt you? Like, how do you kind of see the recruiting? How do you kind of weigh into it? I mean, late, bloom, late bloomers are, are, that's where we recruit. That's who we're going after because these kids – don't have any more spots left to go to, so we say, "Hey, come to us for two years and get your." And these these kids that come to play for us are D1 type players. We have a, a midfielder who could easily play right now in some of the top D1 schools, but he never got the looks. Or he, I don't I think he was a late bloomer himself, and he just I mean, late bloomer can go many different ways. He can go for lacrosse, and he can also go for uh, in the classroom, and so um, just having them get just uh, get their lacrosse up to speed but also get their um, grades is is important I think for these kids that want to go D1 they, they gotta make sure that they get their grades up and um, I, I see that every 
every day and with our kids. Um, you see tons of kids on our team that didn't have the grades early on and didn't have the um, the numbers and they couldn't get into certain schools, so they come to us and get their grades up and now they're going to top schools. But um, that's all I'll say is it, it's it's – there's tons of late bloomers out there, and the game's getting bigger, and you're going to see a lot of kids go more D3, I think, when they can't find options in D1, which you'll see that also in D2 as well. So that's good for the game. I think it's it's good for those schools that get the guys that can't get into the top D1 programs. They can filter into those D3 programs and it helps those programs. Yeah, obviously there's more opportunities in those D3, D2, D3 areas than there are in D1 at this point in time. So, um, well, I, I think we've covered pretty much everything that I had had set out to cover, but, you know, kind of just to wrap up, does anybody have any kind of final thoughts that they want to just throw out that, you know, maybe something sparked during our conversation? I think, uh, I mean, a couple of things. I mean, there, there's so many great programs, whether well, 65 Division I programs, uh, whatever, 100, and, 100, 200 Division three, and however, 50 many Division two. But, you know, I found some, some great options for kids that have decided to go the club route, you know, and go to a big state school maybe in the south. And I don't blame them, you know, going down to a great school like uh, in the SEC or the University of Texas or Arizona or out west to Santa Clara and play club ball. And there's nothing wrong with that because, as Coach pointed out, you know, you're not going to make a – you know, you're not going to make a living off being a lacrosse player, uh, at least, you know, and why not go to a school like Santa Clara in the West Coast and, and, and play club ball and have a ball? I mean, there's so there's those options. And, again, like I just want to reiterate the points of, you know, that it's it's every every option, every kid's experience is different. There's not one that's the same. And, um, you know, it's it's helpful that we have conversations like this and, and, and sort of educate everybody. Right. How about you, Tom? I know we lost a couple of the other guys here <laughs> through the internet, no, but I think it's great. I think the club scene is important. I think it's good for the game, but we also can't forget the high school programs and make sure that the kids are going to class and getting the grades so that they can go to the schools that they want to go to. It's not just they can just say, "Hey, I want to go to Duke," but you got to have the grades to go to Duke, or you have the, you have to have the grades to go to a uh, Virginia. It's it's a it goes hand in hand. So. We got to make sure these kids are going to class, and yeah, the club teams are great. You 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 follow them all summer long, and you, you get close to the coaches. But it also gets back to the high schools and how they play on as a team in high school, and also how they do in the, in the classroom is very important for someone in my position. So. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, I think that's about as great a point to to end on on as as anything else. Um, you know, we got we got Lee back. Um. You know, yeah. coming back. We're getting a couple of guys back. So, coaches, yeah, uh, so we're yeah, just kind of wrapping up with any uh, any final thoughts that you guys might have. Um, you know, on, on the, the topic, anything that might have been send us more socks and adrenaline. Oh man, <laughs> you guys have been great with that. Man. Tell Parker I said thank you. All right, we'll do. So, Coach ZC, do you have any any final thoughts on, on the, the conversation we've been having for the last half hour or so? You know, honestly, reading all of Quinn Kucinich's articles make me kind of upset. Um, I, I think there's a balance. If the right guys are coaching club, club can be a great vehicle. Um, and unfortunately out here, more and more guys are starting to coach high schools, um, but it's just not where the East Coast is as far as high schools. And so club is really the only way for kids out here. Unfortunately, there's probably 25 different clubs in California alone. Maybe three of them are any good. So parents just need to do their research. That's all I would ever say to a Western. Just do your research. Okay. Um, Lee, while, while yeah. we got you, any final thoughts? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree. You know, do your research and try to advise your kids, you know, to what makes sense to them academically. D1, D2, D3 club, as long as you're playing lacrosse, it's it's a good thing. You know, it's a, you know, find a kid because he's not playing Division One lacrosse. I think that's the only thing. Don't forget JUCO, too. Exciting. <laughs> the backyard barbecue. All right, guys. Well, you know, I, I think that kind of wraps up. I appreciate all of you guys participating in the uh, in, in the hangout with us today. Um, you know, Coach O'Neill, Coach uh, Southern, Coach CC, and Coach Peace. You know, it's been been a great conversation. I'm sure we we got no resolution. The debate will go on for ad infinite. You know, whoever knows how long it'll end. But uh, I appreciate you uh, at least having a discussion with us today. All right, guys. Thanks, See you guys. Right, bye.